Scott Barnes. I wasn't sure that I'd have an opportunity to speak on, uh, from the Army's perspective. And so I gave a, a brief uh, few words when I was speaking on behalf of Doyle Stolting. But in my role as the, uh, I'm at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, as I've mentioned, I'm a cornea and refractive surgery trained uh, specialist. And when I went through prior to uh, um, understanding what ophthalmology was or knowing anything about or becoming an eye surgeon, I was working a different side of the fence um, with special operations arena and the, that includes the Green Berets, the Army Rangers, special operations, aviation regiments, which are the people that fly the helicopters that you may have been popularized at in uh, Black Hawk Down, and a number of classified units that we don't talk about exist, but they do some significant work. And really since the year 2000, the Army has decided, or the Special Operations Command particularly said, hey, now that you've gone off and become an eye surgeon, we need you to come back and help us decide if we should have a refractive surgery program for these particular people. And I said, well, the Army's decided it's a good thing. They said, we don't care what the Army says. We want to know from one of our guys that used to be out there doing the things that we're doing, jumping out of planes and diving and flying helicopters, we need to know, is it safe for us? Because we don't trust anybody, even the regular Army. And so I said, sure, I'll come up to Fort Bragg and, and I'll spend a couple of years uh, doing some work to help decide if this is the program we should, in, uh, should institute. Now these guys um, are fairly unique and to dispel any rumors, they, they don't just take everything. They complain a lot. If something isn't perfect, they complain. If things don't work out well for them, they complain. And they don't have any qualms in saying, you screwed up my life if we do something wrong. So it's, it, it behooves us as physicians to make sure that we're going to be giving them something that's going to enhance their quality of life, make them be able to do their job better, and to avoid problems if they're there. And we all know that problems can occur in any surgical procedure. Everyone has said that. And the bottom line with most of these guys, and they were very concerned when I talked to them and said, hey, I'm going to be going up to uh, Washington, D.C., and I may have an opportunity to speak on your behalf. And they said, Doctor, whatever you do, tell them that no matter what happens anywhere else, please don't take this away from us. Please don't take it away from us. Because when I go out there, they call it outside of the wire, outside of the protected area. When I go outside of the wire and I can't see somebody as well as they can see me, that's a significant quality of life issue. If I end up losing my glasses when I'm jumping out of a plane at 25,000 feet, I, don't, I can't stop on the way to Pearl Vision and get an, a set of glasses. It affects my quality of life. It affects what I'm able to do, what I can do for the guys that are depending on me. So it's a significant issue for these guys. They're, they're not talking about cosmetic needs. They're not talking about, it'd be nice to not take my pictures in glasses. They're saying, I can't do my job as well in glasses or contacts as I can after refractive surgery. And so it makes, and when they go off to battle, they end up knowing that if they ever get caught as a prisoner of war, if they're minus five, minus six diopter myope, the first thing that's always done is that your glasses are broken and taken from you. They don't even need to put a guard on you. You will not be able to find your way out when you can't see. If they're lost and behind enemy lines and they're trying to evade and trying to depend on maybe seeing some of their guys come by so they can get rescued, they're not going to jump out of the bushes when they're minus six myope and say, I can't even see who that is. I'm not going to jump up and say, are you insurgent or are you my buddy? because it is a life risk for them to do that. So for them to say, I don't have to wear glasses or contacts. I now can see to see my own guys. I can see to distinguish bad guy, good guy. I can see to safely jump out of a plane. I can see to dive underwater. I can see safely to fly a helicopter at night. And we do most of our work at night. Most All of our work in the military is at night. That phrase, we own the night, that's kind of something that we, we look at. So night glare, halo, those issues, huge matters for us. So I, I don't, I'm not going to belabor the point anymore. I've spoken enough on that. But the word from the guys that are out there standing in harm's way, whose lives depend on their ability to see, to do their job, are asking you to please not take this away. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Mr. Joseph Schell. Sh 